What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Justin Falls. We're back at it again with another video. Today, we're looking at the Tekken 8 final preview from IGN. This game is coming out in, in a month, a little bit over a month, like a week, a week and a half. A month and a week and a half, pretty much. It comes out uh, July, no, January 26th. I think you can play it a couple days early if you pre-order, which I will be doing. Just not yet. So, um, there's really ain't, really ain't much else to say. So, without further ado, let's get to the video. Other fighting game, a multi-stage uh -oh. knockdown. The first fight in Tekken 8 story mode would probably be the finale in just about any other fighting game. Probably. A multi-stage knockdown, drag-out slobber knocker between Jin Kazama and Kazuya Mishima that results in a crashed helicopter, leveled buildings, and an aerial sequence that wouldn't be out of place in the Matrix Revolutions or Man of Steel. All of this to say. It's incredibly hype. This isn't a spoiler, by the way. It's the first 10 to 15 minutes, and it only Jeez. gets more interesting from there. But before we get into all that, let me set the scene and introduce the players. Typical Tekken shit, mad over the top. Crazy. I spent about three hours playing Tekken 8 this past week. I started with the story mode. From the word go, you'll notice how incredible everything looks, to the point that certain transitions between cinematics and gameplay are sometimes hard to spot. And then there are the fights themselves, alternatively brutal, wild, and unique affairs that change depending on what's happening in the story. What struck me most was how intimate many of the fights felt. Things going badly for your character in the cinematics, you might start the next scrap at lower health or be Darn. unable to use certain techniques. Alternatively, you might also have access to special moves that would be too powerful for normal play, or gain access to new stuff when the plot calls for it. There's a sense of continuity and escalation to the fights that many fighting game story modes don't have, and being able to fight the same character several times in succession helps sell the uniqueness of their fighting styles, their relationships with the other fighters, and the stakes at play. I'll spoil as little as possible, but by the time I was out of the first chapter, the stage was set for the next King of Iron Fist tournament. Old faces were banding together to take down so Kazuya, Lars, fan the favorites goat. were fighting it out for tournament slots, Jin was facing down his literal demons, Kazuya was hamming it up for the cameras, and new characters like Reina were adding an air of mystery to the whole affair. Who is she related to bro? She called Jean Senpai, so that's who taught her how to fight. And Kazuya doesn't even know who who she is, so there must be some time skip shit, some shit that happened in between seven and eight, to where we met her. Unless this is just somebody that Jean just never referred to. Fair. How would it all play out? I didn't know, but I was excited for each fight. In fact. I was so invested in the whole thing that I nearly didn't recognize the point at which I was supposed to stop playing. Whoops. Producers Katsuhiro Harada and Michael Murray couldn't give me an exact length for Tekken 8 story mode, but they did say that it would be about one and a half times as long as Tekken 7's, which is impressive given the sense of scale and attention to detail on display, as well as how many members of the main cast were meaningfully involved in the sections I saw. Of course, that number doesn't include the individual character episodes, one for each of the 32 members of Tekken 8's launch roster, which I unfortunately wasn't allowed to touch. They, ba this, they basically made this guy, like Chavalier, this guy, they basically made him for the Noctis players, the Noctis pros, because he, he plays just like Noctis. After about an hour with the story mode, I switched over to Arcade Quest. Though I could have gone to almost anywhere in the large part of Tekken 8 Bandai Namco made available to me. I picked Arcade Quest for two reasons. First, because as someone who found my love of fighting games in the arcades of yesteryear, I was eager to see how Tekken Project had approached the mode after seeing so much of it, but being unable to play it during our October IGN first coverage. Second, because Murray told me Tekken Project I mean, that's what Arcade Quest. He said it becomes redundant after a thousand times going in. But I mean that's that's what that's fighting games. Unless you're like really passionate about fighting games, or even if you are, sometimes you just get burned out doing the same thing over and over. Even if you're nice and you're winning all the time, it's like after a while you just get burned out of playing the same, doing the same thing over and over, practicing the same combos, getting the same combos done on to you, winning against the same type of opponent in the same type of way, losing against the same opponent in the same type of way. 
you know, you get burned out. So that's just the nature of fighting games because there ain't much to it but to just box or learn a new character and learn how to box with them. Best being the second stop for most players after they completed the story mode. I wanted to see how well that path worked. If the story mode and father-son showdown between Jin Kazama and Kazuya Mishima is where most lapsed and first-time players will be introduced to Tekken's story and world, Arcade Quest is where they'll pick their character and start their journey toward Tekken mastery. This mode drops you into the shoes of a Tekken newbie who has joined up with a squad of Tekken fans excited about Tekken 8. After witnessing a tournament won by the only thing that matters is winning, Orochi, who unsurprisingly looks like, dresses like, and plays as Kazuya That's Mishima, Kazuya, yep. your crew decides to enter the Tekken World Tour and prove him wrong in the most fighting game way possible by punching him in the virtual face. First though, you'll need to learn how to play Tekken, and that's just what Arcade Quest is designed to do. Your friend Max, something of a Tekken expert, will sit down and show you the basics, teaching you how to do basic combos or use mechanics like Heat Smash. Oh, fire. In a normal fighting game, you'd be sped along to the next lesson, but after Max teaches you a couple of things, you're turned loose in Gong, your small local arcade. So kind of like, kind of like Shorty, Shorty and, and her brothers, in uh, Street Fighter Six. They're there throughout the game for you, in the in the story mode, throughout the environments to teach you, to teach you how to do some of the mechanics in the game. And as you go further in the game, they teach you more advanced mechanics. But I think this is going to take that concept and uh, take it a step further because that's the thing about being first like with these type of advancements in uh to the to the genre like somebody's going to come in after you and do it better according to harada and murray is more representative of a japanese arcade than some of the other ones you'll encounter later on from there you're free to challenge other players each with their own different play styles of course you've got your core group of friends prim is all about using tekken's character customization to show off her style and her character reflects that. Beat is also new to Tekken and focuses on landing flashy moves. Nick is the competitive type and secretly hopes to farm you for rank points. And Max, Max just wants you to have fun. But you can challenge anyone you run into. Each one seems designed to teach you something. One will use different wake up options each I'm time the, to throw you I'm off. The, yeah, I'm the have fun guy. I like to just have fun. I do like to, I'm an Aries, so I'm competitive by nature. But, you know, in my, in my, in my elder years, you know, I'm 32 now. Like, winning is not as important as having fun to me. I say that, but if you were to get me on the game and I start going, I start talking shit and be like, nah, I want to play again. But I've developed my skill to a point where it's like, all right, I know I'm good. So if I lose, then, yeah, you're legit better than me. Like, you're really good because you're better than me. So, and I don't have the time nor the desire to sit there and get – as good as you are at the game. That's how I feel about shooters too, but that's another kind. That's a whole another conversation. Guard, another really likes to use his heat attacks. My favorite was a player hidden in the back who is a much higher rank than everyone else at Gong. He played an absolutely nasty Feng Wei and smoked me both times I played him. As you play, Max will give you challenges to complete using the things he's taught you, and you'll snag rewards for doing so. Other characters will offer rewards for completing certain tasks, like using a heat smash or performing a specific launcher when you play them. Meanwhile, Victor, a selection of your character's me. useful moves will be displayed on screen to help you get started. I used the opportunity to learn Victor, as I hadn't had a chance to play him in previous builds. His fast and flashy, sword and gun focused style is just as cool as it looks in his trailer. <laughs> I debated sticking with him for my whole run with Arcade Quest, but then I had an idea. Since I was going to learn about my character just by playing them in this mode, why not I like also play Reina, the other totally new addition to the cast. I fell in love with her immediately, mostly because she reminded me of Lydia, the Prime Minister of Poland, and my main from Tekken 7. If she also had electrics. A fast, aggressive stance character with great buttons and good damage? Yes, please. Hey, yo. Nah, she's kind of scrubby. Because look at her moves, yo. Yo, so dash. 
so dash so she has a dash um like a sliding kick that's probably like a sliding kick out of all maybe she jumps in the air with it i don't know then she has a <laughs> then she has a jack she has like a, a a scrubby kind of combo there with the that's a what two 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 one or whatever i don't know how you guys say it but that's like a jab, jab, jab. Like, you know how a lot of players like DSP or like Lil Tigard or even some pro players I've seen complain about it. Or some players that even like complain like jab, jab, jab. Like that. She has a mashy combo. You could you could do that slide kick and then as soon as they recover, hit them with the mash, mash, mash. And then the downright, the downright um kick. What is I think that I think that's a kick there at that at that button. Oh. She is gonna she's gonna get people mad. Great buttons and good damage? Yes, please. Her button's almost too Plus, good. She's got some great costumes, and there's her matches sitting on a throne. It's not the like. I stuck with her almost exclusively during the rest of my time with Tekken 8, taking breaks only for Azucena and Leroy. After playing around in training mode to get a better glimpse of Reyna's kit, running a few sets with a friend who also happened to be there, good games, Kai. And sitting down for some Tekken Ball, which is just as good and ridiculous as you remember. I hopped into Super Ghost Battle. I got in a glimpse of it during the CBT, but here there was a huge list of ghosts to challenge. I did not get into the CBT and I was so mad about that because they sent me the email and I signed up for it. And they said, okay, go ahead and verify your email. So I go on my email to try to verify my email. I click the link and it just takes me back to the home screen. There's nothing to verify my shit, and they never sent me a code. That shit pissed me off. So I started at the bottom and worked my way up. Ghosts are still remarkably impressive. They play like real people, tendencies and all, for better and worse. Like to default to a particular round start option? Your ghost will do that too. Move a certain way? Ditto for your ghost. Default towards certain wake up and okie options? Your ghost will emulate it. But what impressed me most was just how fast the ghosts learn. And I'm not just talking about your ghost, which will greatly resemble you after just a few games and quite literally learns on the fly. I'm talking about started responding to my offense and forcing me to go to the next layer levels of learning in real time. The sort of thing you see from real players, particularly at higher levels of play. Obviously, the ghost was just reacting the way the player it's based on would, but when I sat down with Harada and My Murray- did an abdominal, an abdominal stretch slam, like, King is a savage. After my play session, I had to ask how they did this. Fighting game AI is notoriously tricky to implement, and even the best ones often default to patterns that are easy to notice if you pay attention. Mm. That was just how the ghosts worked, they told me, and yes, they did learn in real time. Definitely got it. Definitely got that that Mishima the Mishima uh blood in her. She got that devil gene in her. Harada speculated that Tekken 8's ghost might be the highest level AI available in any fighting game. We'll need to play the final game to know for sure, but based on what I've seen so far, Leroy I'm Jenkins. not inclined to disagree. I left the event feeling that way about much of Tekken 8. It's rare for a fighting game to truly move the needle and advance the genre because of how well established and codified it is. Even truly great fighters often don't manage to do it. But over the last few years, we've had several fighters, from Guilty Gear Strive to Street Ooh. Fighter VI, push the genre forward in exciting ways. Tekken 8 feels like it has the potential to be the next name on that list. <laughs> It's a tall order and we won't know until January. But if you told me Tekken 8 was highly seated in its bracket, I'd believe you. We'll just have to wait until January to run the sets and find out how everything holds up on the biggest stage when the lights are shining brightest. Indeed. For more, check out our preview of Alone in the Dark and for everything else in the world of gaming, keep it locked at IGN. Yeah! I can't wait to run it. I can't wait to run it, man. Ah, oh, man. I really want to... I'm about to just go play Tekken 7 all night and just lab. Because I know a lot of the characters' moves, like the basic moves, are going to be the same. Or maybe it might be the same buttons. Just a different move comes out. Because that's what's happened in previous... 
iterations. Either they'll copy the moveset over, add a couple new things, or they'll just add a revamp the new moveset, but it's the same buttons. From from my experience, I don't know. I don't know, from my experience. But yeah, so I can't wait. This is going to be cool. I don't think nothing much else needs to be said. It's Tekken 8. You already know the fucking vibes. Stop playing around. You're going to buy this game. If you clicked on this video nine times out of ten, you already plan on buying this game. You just want to see what it has to offer. So y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. So I don't want to assume things. All right. So you already know the vibes. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's your boy just falls and we out. Come on.